Right, hello YouTube. Before I begin, let me just tell you that I won't be uploading videos for about a month or so because I'm in the middle of moving from one country to another. Before I go, I wanted to do a quick series on how to play Spectres, and here's the last one with Nim. Nim has base strength of 1 and movement of 2. Her attack does 24 damage per attack and she moves at 4.35 meters per second. At max plus 6, this is 5.35 meters per second. Nimp is the only spectre with ranged attack as a basic attack, meaning she is actually able to land hits from distance. Not only that, her ranged attack applies 10% movement speed reduction to survivors, stacking up to 2 times. This means on successful hits, survivor movement speed can go down to 4.6 meters per second when sprinting, which seems like a huge deal, and it is. For her great basic attack, her active perk, called Phage Shift, is rather underwhelming. This ability increases Nymph's strength and movement by factor of 1, essentially turning Nymph into Bell, while losing ability to use ranged attacks on a 60 second cooldown, with a 1 second mandatory stun when ability expires after 20 seconds. Yes, that is right, you lose ranged attack and the passive slow for 4 more damage and 0.3 meters per second speed difference. Yes, sure you get AoE slowdown when you activate it, but it hardly does anything when survival can still move at 5.175 meters per second, whereas Nymph is still moving at 4.65 meters per second with this active perk. Now, both Nymph's greatest strength and weakness is her ranged attack. Sounds odd, right? Okay, her ranged attack can go over some objects or learn Spectre to put pressure from distance. Something that other specs can't do. Well, well at least not on a 5 second cooldown, which is what cooldown for basic attacks are. Her projectile doesn't go very far, but far enough to cover a lot of distance, allowing him to maintain defense over several rituals. Not only that, due to nature of ranged attacks, Nymph is able to trade blows from distance and exorcism can be very hard if Nymph is continued to use distance to her advantage even when all rituals are completed. If that wasn't all, her ranged attack slow makes it very hard but survives to dodge her projectile as well. The problem, however, is that this attack also has worst hitbox out of all three specters. Nymph's projectile must connect with back of survivor to register as hit. More often than not, if you aim at legs on survivor, preying on rituals, the projectile will simply go through survivors. Sometimes, they just go through even if you aim very well. If that isn't bad enough, despite having a very strict hitbox when connecting with survivors, the same projectile can be blocked by a bunch of objects on the map. Sometimes, there's nothing and it gets blocked. Combined together, hitting the very first projectile can be daunting for newcomers. And you need to hit survivor a minimum of 5 times to kill them. These inconsistencies mean Nymp isn't exactly big enough friendly spectre either, despite having best potential out of all 3 spectres. And another weakness is her slow movement speed. There are places on each map where Nymph can be looped around for a long time since she cannot get bloodsy. Since she's slow, she can't close the distance and chase can last forever. Even with one projectile hit, survivor can easily get the distance back. Not only that, due to her slowness, survivor can also chain a lot of objects such as doors and lockers or even simply moving around Nymph to dodge her projectiles. There are plenty of perks you can choose on Nymph, similar to Belle. Since she's not reliant on her active perk, Nymph doesn't even need Darker Cult, which means you can use Lights Up Helmet, Auto Guard for defense, Share Barrier for the end game fight, Serial Killer for pressure, etc. But for the high levels of play, having either Auto Guard or Helmet always helps against CC, and having Poltergeist as a second perk helps reduce time destroying objects on the, on the map. While Serial Killer is great for mobility, you can barely use it against good groups of survivors, whereas Poltergeist will see some more use at least. But this is down to you. Despite the high difficulty of hitting, hitting with projectiles, Nymph has more straightforward playstyle. You see a survivor, you hit survivor. Similar to Belle, 
you simply just have to chase survivors. Difference is that as you chase, you can check for surrounding rituals and also put pressure on those rituals as well. This makes playing against Nim particularly nasty when your teammates run around the ritual that is set up. So as Spectre, you want to do exactly that. You make sure you do not run into dead zones and waste a ton of time. That's all. One thing you can do as Nymph is split the pressure a little. Nymph does 24 damage per shot, which means even with two shots, lowest HP characters such as Jane and Nipper won't even show as injured. This means the likelihood of getting health potion from red chest is low. So hitting everyone once or twice before committing to a full chase can be a good tactic if rituals are not making any progress. Another thing to note is using correct skin cosmetics. Nymph hair covers a lot of screen and can really block your sight lines. Ocean Monarch or Canned Nymph skin both reduce screen clutter, helping you to manage your game. Yes, it is a pay to win clearly. Okay. <laughs> Lastly, when the ritual is complete, you want to maintain distance. You don't want to hit a survivor if there's a group of them coming at you since register hit doesn't allow Spectre to use invisibility. Instead, you want to gain distance and fight around your immunity cooldown. Yes, it is cheap and unfair, but then again, so is 4 vs 1. Nymp is by far the strongest out of all three Spectres. Despite lower damage, she has better TTK than Bell or Prisoner simply because she can use ranged attack. Despite this, however, her projectile has issues with non reg hits and collision with objects. Learning to use her attack is the first and most important step in using Nim. After that, learn loops, which, ca which is a waste of time. There are several across the all maps, if, and if survivor is good, there is little reason to follow that survivor. Even Nim has a limit in this meta where three rituals can be complete within 4 minutes. As always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you when I come back. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. I upload videos on a regular basis. If you got any suggestions or anything you have in mind, please leave a comment down below. Thanks for watching.